Hello everyone, and welcome to this lecture series looking at qualitative pharmacokinetics. This video itself is going to serve as an introduction to subsequent videos which will dive into more detail. Pharmacology as a study looks at the interaction between drugs and living systems. Pharmacokinetics, which is a subdivision of the study of pharmacology, looks more specifically at the study of drug movement. You can see how the word itself is kind of broken down to these two Greek roots, pharmakon and kinetikos, meaning drug and movement. Let's ask ourselves a question. What does the body do to drugs that it encounters? That it encounters. This is somewhat of a counterintuitive question because typically when we when we speak about drugs, we really focus on on really what does the drug do to a body, uh, like what are the effects of that drug. But pharmacokinetics is very much concerned with the opposite. What does the body do to drugs that we are actually taking? So let's dive right into this concept. Pharmacokinetics begins with absorption. Before a drug can be considered in a living organism, it must be transferred into that organism itself. So the process of absorption describes this exactly. And by all means, absorption refers to the process through which the drug enters the plasma. And what I'm drawing here is an important equilibrium that takes place as soon as the drug enters the plasma compartment, which we'll designate within this blue box. So once the drug, okay, so once the drug enters the plasma compartment, it exists in both its or in its free form and a bound form. Now the extent to which each of these is favored depends uh, very, very much so on the drug itself. So let me actually just illustrate this with, uh, with kind of a, a thought. So bear with me here. So imagine that you took a drop of oil and you put that into, let me, be, let me draw here. So you had a pool of water and you take a drop of oil and you put it in that pool of water. The oil will stick to itself because of different uh, differences in, in forces. The oil is much more lipophilic whereas the water is much more hydrophilic, so they prefer to associate themselves uh, separately. Now, in the same way that this happens with oil and water, imagine if you have a lipophilic drug and you put that into plasma. Well, plasma is mainly water, so what actually happens? Well, that lipophilic drug will try its best to associate with other things that are similar in terms of polarity. And what it'll actually find is plasma proteins. So what I mean by this equilibrium is that some drug is actually free, uh, and this is very much so our pharmacologically active form of the drug, but some drug may actually be bound to plasma proteins such as albumin or alpha-1 acid glycoprotein. We will talk about this more in a subsequent video because this is a very complex equilibrium. But when we look at absorption itself, let's start to break it down. What are some of the important factors? The first is the route of administration, otherwise referred to as ROA. And the second is the properties of the drug itself. To best describe this, I'm going to use an example. So imagine that we use, uh, or we take an aspirin. Aspirin is acetyl salicylic acid, and one of the uses of aspirin is actually you take it daily so that you, uh, or, or in kind of older people who are more at risk uh, of, of cardiovascular events uh, that are thromboembolic, you take it as sort of a blood thinner in, in some sense. And so the route of administration of aspirin is oral. So you're taking it in a pill form. And the properties are that it's a weak acid. So when it's in the body, it's actually ionized and very much so favors this free drug part of the equilibrium. Another example of, 
uh, of absorption would be of a volatile anesthetic. So for example, something that like desflurane or sevoflurane, which is actually a gas at room temperature, which means that you take it through the inhalational route of administration. So once we're in the plasma, I really like to think of the plasma as the body's highway. So once you're on the highway, you can, you can go anywhere. So you can go to tissues, and those tissues could be anything from, say, uh, bone to fat, muscle, nervous tissue, etc. And the other thing, uh, the other site is actually the site of action. So once we're on this proverbial highway, which is the bloodstream or the circulatory system, we go to either the tissues, uh, and, and some of those tissues might actually be the site of action. And what's important is the site of action typically has receptors that bind to the drug and, and exert some sort of pharmacological action. And this receptor binding is actually a branch of pharmacology uh, that is called pharmacodynamics. So this can be considered... Oh, that's definitely the wrong letter. That's my bad. Distribution. That is sort of, so absorption was the first pillar of pharmacokinetics. The second is really distribution. How is my drug getting to these different sites where it's going to exert its action? So aspirin, for example, would have to get, so in, in the case we talked about above, where, where we're using it for its kind of blood thinning, thinning aspect, we really want to get to the platelets and cyclooxygenase enzymes in particular. Now, when we're on this highway, we can also go to metabolically active sites, such as the liver, the kidneys, or even the blood. And when we're here, the free drug can, actively, can actually be converted to inactive forms of the drug, or even, in some cases, active forms of the drug. Now, I'm going to do a video specifically on the conversion of free drug to active forms of the drug. Uh, but I'm just going to introduce the concept here. That's actually a pro-drug, where the free drug, as pharmacologists, we give the free drug to, because we know it's going to be changed by the body into another form through this metabolism. So, for example, that would be prednisolone uh, to prednisone, which are corticosteroids. So typically, your liver is your main organ there, and your liver can break things down using mixed function oxidases or your cytochrome P450 enzyme system, uh, which we'll discuss in great detail later. The final component is excretion. And I've, I've run out of room here, so I'm just going to say this verbally. But excretion, or actually, you know what, I can write it right here. Excretion can happen renally, can happen through the biliary system. So what we've done here is we've sort of painted a broad picture of the qualitative side of pharmacokinetics. The first thing that we concern ourselves with is how is the drug absorbed into the body? And we looked at routes of administration and the actual properties of the drug. So once it gets to this plasma component, we sort of touched on this dynamic equilibrium between free form and bound form. And we also mentioned that the plasma is actually kind of like your highway. So your highway can distribute your drug to tissues, and what's very clinically important is your site of action. And remember, tissues is actually a, a very useful way to uh, kind of envision the side effects that, we'll, that patients will experience. On this highway, we actually end up at the metabolic machinery of the body. And this metabolism can do a couple of things. It can either convert to an inactive form or an active form of the drug, which is then useful or, or not useful. And from the inactive form, or even from the free drug, we can excrete our drug. And excretion is really important because it shows us how we need to top up our dose and make sure that our patient has a sufficient amount of drug at any given time. So I realized that I, I've dropped a lot of information there, and I, I sort of get excited with this topic, so I do apologize for that. But what I'd like to just really focus in on here is four aspects that are sort of your pillars and your foundation of pharmacokinetics that we'll talk about. Absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. I have run over time, so we're going to call it there, um, but I hope you enjoyed that video, and we'll certainly talk uh, 
about these four concepts in great detail in videos to come. Thanks again, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.